So for this setup guide, I'm going to show you how to get Commodore 64 running with Retrobat. I'm going to tell you about file extensions you might need and the best ones to pick for a Commodore 64 emulation. I'm also going to go through some video settings and get you the best experience, so check this one out. Okay then, uh, first things first, if you've not hit notifications, be sure to hit notifications if you like this video, of course, and hit subscribe so you can get Retrobat content, Batistera content, Launchbox content, and everything else I do as I upload it. So first things first, what we're going to do is just have a quick talk about file extensions on Commodore 64 game files. So you've got several on Commodore 64. Uh, so two I've got just here. This is a .d64 file extension. And .d64 pretty much means it's a floppy disk image. So it's quite a quick loader. Now, microcomputers such as Commodore 64, Spectrum, Amstrad, MSX, they've all got this reputation of taking hours to load up. So for Britain... Uh, most of us had cassette tapes back in the day, whereas America mainly have floppy disks. So, anyways, I've got a D64 just here, and this is clearly a floppy disk drive image, and it doesn't take too long to load up. And above it, we got a dot .program. So a dot .program is pretty much a cartridge file. So let's just remember, on the Commodore 64, we got a cassette drive to load games from. We got a cartridge port or the expansion port on the back. And we've also got the 1541 disk drives. So there's a few different ways the Commodore 64 could run games. And this is why we've got so many different file types. So the other one, which I don't have and I don't recommend, is dot .taps or dot .t64s. Uh, those are cassette images. So if you can, try and obtain a .d64 or a dot .program image. So I'm going to just go into Retrobat. So if I right-click on the shortcut, open file location, and I open up Bat GUI, and I always recommend this for people wondering why their games aren't showing. Uh, so I'm going to drop down System at the top, and I'm going to just say, if you can't see this, then take a look at my full setup guide. Uh, some people on some of my setup guides said they can't see this list of system names. Uh, this is likely a case of your Visual C++ with one in DirectX uh, installations not being installed correctly. So take a look at my main setup guide for Retrobat. So for this, I'm going to just go to C64. And under extensions, we got .crt, which is a cartridge image, D64, which is a disk file image, uh, G64 and .nips, they're a little bit more uncommon, uh, T64 is your cassette tape image, which are very slow, and we got .zip and .7zip, or .7z. So anyways, what we're going to do is just back out of here, and obviously this is how you know which games are going to work with Retrobat. And let's close this down, and I'm going to just go into my ROMs folder now, and drag my two games in it. So, let's just find C64 for now, and I'm just going to make a note that C128 is for the Commodore 128, which released in 1985, but was largely a flop. Uh, the C64 being the world's best-selling computer at the time, uh, the C128 had no chance, but... If you want to play 128 game, and there's only a few exclusives for the 128, just drag them in there, and it'll pretty much work the same as what we're going to use with C64, which is the Vice Core. So let's open up C64. I'm going to dr drag these two games in. So we've got Bubble Bobble, which is a classic, in held as one of the greatest C64 ports, arcade ports, that is. And we got a newer game by Cytronic, which is the Vice Squad. And if you're interested in modern games, check out my playlists for Modern 64. So let's close this down, and I'm going to open up Retrobat. So if you've not already noticed uh, or realised, I'm a big Commodore 64 fan, and it's pretty much my favourite system of all time uh, since 1990, my first gaming experience. So anyways, we got Commodore 64 now. And what we can see here is we don't have our other game, so I dragged in two files in this. We've only got Bubble Bobble. Let me show you how I'm going to do this. If we just go to Main Menu and quit, what I'm going to do is go into GUI again, open File Location, Back GUI. Now, the other game I had in there was a extension with .prg. 
So I'm going to drag down C64 again. And if we notice this, there is no .prg. So I'm going to add this one as an extension by pressing plus and then typing in PRG, add, and then save custom config file for a selected system. Successfully saved. Let's go back into Retrobat. And here we go, we now have the Vice Squad as well, which was the uh, .prg image. So first thing I'm going to do is just grab some artwork and perhaps some preview videos for this. So main menu, scraper, and scrape now. Now I'm going to show you the difference in speed times in a sec once we've downloaded and applied this artwork. So once this has been done, we're going to go to game settings, update game list, and yes. And here we go, so bubble bobble and the voice squad now just let me let you know that not all commodore 64 games are going to scrape artwork so it's just the way it is so what i'm going to do first is show you bubble bobble which is a disk image so let's open this one up but first go to view options advanced system options and i'm going to make sure that libretro vice times 64 is selected and Vice is a very good standalone emulator, and thankfully we got a port of this to RetroArch as a core. So just make sure to select that one. And I'm going to open up Bubble Bubble now, which is the .z64. So here we go. We don't need to type any commands in with this. It's automatically doing it for us. So I just press space on my keyboard just to bypass that. And also to let you know, if you press select on your controller or the equivalent of what I'm pressing to select on my PS3 controller, this is going to bring up a virtual keyboard. So sometimes on microcomputers, especially this one, it might ask us to type a key, for example, F1, F2, to change something. Uh, sometimes your physical keyboard isn't going to work. So this is why we've got a virtual keyboard for this let me show you an example so we come to a screen like we got here and it says run stop in brackets to start so if i put up my virtual keyboard and just navigate to run stop and there we go and we're back to that lovely rainbow screen so uh <laughs> You know, as a kid, I'm surprised I never had seizures looking at this, but I learned to love it, and I'm sure people watching this might have as well. Good stuff, good times. And we've also got this on here as well. So if I use my keyboard, uh, page down and page up keys, they're not working. So what I'm going to do is open up my keyboard again, my virtual keyboard, and just use down on here. Okay, as we can see, that's working just fine. And if you notice just a minute ago, I hit a little button on the virtual keyboard, which abbreviated as joystick. So if your controller doesn't work, then open up your virtual keyboard during gameplay or whenever and just press that joystick button. Uh, Commodore 64 games would mainly work from port 2 on the Commodore 64 uh port one games mm. so anyway that's your problem just there so uh, we also noticed that the loading time dragged on i cut most of it out but there was around three to four minutes of waiting time so i'm gonna go to the vice squads now which is the dot prg and open this one up and we're straight in I've literally not edited that part of this video. We are straight in. So as we can see, .prg is uh, way ahead of loading times. So stick with that file extension if you can. 
So next up, I'm going to show you how to make the screen look better. So as we can see, I have the decorations on the side just now. I'm going to just make this a bit better. So I'm going to press select on my controller, advanced system options, shader set. Uh, we got many different shaders or rather filters here, if you like. And I always go for enhanced on this, always. Although we got different scan line options at the bottom for old schoolers out there. In fact, I'm going to do this as scan lines for a change. So let's go to scan lines on here. Decorations is obviously the decoration we had on the sides, which is uh, default is unglazed C64. I'm going to go for none because I want this in the aspect ratio of 16 by 9, uh, which I'm going to select just here. Uh, Integral scaling. So we're going to have a full screen, but by applying this, it's going to add a slight blur to the edges and get rid of some pixelation as well. So I'm going to turn this on. So I'm going to turn vertical sync on too. So that's going to reduce any screen tear should we get it. Now, if we just go down a bit further till we get to visual rendering, uh, we got the option here to smooth games a little bit further. So I'm going to turn this one on. Now, for real big Commodore 64 fans out there, if we just go down to color palette, we got a selection here of different colors used by different systems uh, for our games. So that's entirely up to you to mess around with. I'm going to just keep this to auto. And I like to go to color depth. And if I put this on the 24 bit, it will just make our colors a bit more of that enriched. So that's what I'm going to do there. And let me just tell you something else. There are certain games out there which requires a bit more memory. Uh, let me tell you about Sonic the Hedgehog. It was a great port which came out about two years ago. And if we go to emulation, if you want to run this game, uh, we need to go to memory expansion and put this one to 512 kilobyte. So just to make you aware of that. So anyway, let's come out of here and I'm going to open up the Vice Squad again and see how this looks. I would go for a bubble bubble, but it just takes too long. So the Vice Squad it is. And here we go. So I've got my scan lines applied. And as we can see, the decorations are gone. And there is some pixelation, but largely it looks a bit more blurred than what it did originally. <laughs> So as we can see, my video settings have now applied and it looks a little bit better. I tell you what, I'm going to give you a treat and I'm going to open up Bubble Bubble. And this time around, I'm going to go to Advanced System Options. And I'm going to change the shader set to what I normally go for, which is Enhance. So if I boot up Bubble Bubble again, with the same settings, just with Enhance Shader applied, let's see how this one looks. So just to remember what I said, if some Commodore 64 games don't recognize your controller, it's just a case of bringing up that virtual keyboard and just pressing down on Joy P. Now that should now swap ports. So as you can see, that's working just fine. So just make a mental note of swapping that joystick port button if you come across an issue where things aren't recognized in your controller. So that's it for today for my Commodore 64 Retrobat setup guide. I have got different micro systems in my Retrobat playlist, such as the ZX Spectrum for now, and a couple of others. But I'm going to add to these. I've got Amstrad CPC coming up pretty soon, and I've also got a DOS setup guide for Retrobat coming soon. So make sure you hit notifications and subscribe so you don't miss those videos. And just check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time... Stay retro!